Hi, how are you doing? So in this video, I'm just going to show you one of the tools that I've just released. This is called Test Tool Hub. Now, originally, this started as a set of uh, coding exercises. So it's got a variety of tools. And I just thought rather than have this stuff lying around on my hard drive, I'm going to release this as an open source tool. So I've packaged it up a little bit in order to release it on GitHub. So let's go off to GitHub and here we are. This is the test tool hub, github.com slash evil tester slash test tool hub. And you can look through the code if you want. It uses Java FX, it relies on Java 1.8. So you need to have Java 1.8 installed to use this. Uh, there's nothing fancy in any installer. So I'm just gonna download the version one zip it's got a catchy name of version one. You can see I've done it before. I'm doing it again for the purposes of this video. Show and finder. So I'm going to open this with my default archive utility. Go into the catchy version one folder where I've got the jar and the readme.txt. Readme.txt just says, well, let's have a look. It says run it with Java minus jar test tool hub. Get a terminal up. And Java minus jar test tool hub jar with dependencies dot jar catchy name. So there we go. So there's nothing overly complicated about this. There's a set of tools in here, one for doing counter strings, one for generating strings from one um, ASCII value or Unicode value to another. There's a canned text tree, which isn't finished yet, and the ability to do URLs and HTML comments. So probably the one that's most important to most people is the counter strings. Counter strings have been around for a while. Um, I learned about them from James Bach. He's got a counter strings tool on his uh, website. Let's have a look. Perl clip is called. Test tools, James Bach, Perl clip. There it is. So you can download that. It's a little, just a Perl app, and it's got a whole variety of options. So that's quite useful if you don't want to use the one that I'm using. What it basically does, let's find out. Uh, string length. So let's use this one. So there's a website called string functions. There's a length. So if I generate a hundred counter string and create it, it generates it in this text box. I could um, copy and paste this here, or I could do copy. Copy will take anything that's in this text area and copy it. I'm going to paste this in here. Let's calculate the length and the length is hundred characters, which is what we'd expect, which is good. And we know it's hundred characters from this because the last character there says asterisk, which basically means this character is character 100. Now, if it had been chopped off, so I could only paste that into a field, I would know that this character is 96, 97, 98. So now it's 98 characters long. And that's the benefit of having a counter string function. Now, most counter string tools are about the same. You type in a length, you choose the delimiter, let's delimit with this one create the counter string and then you copy into something. This counter string, if I clear this, will also let me go straight into the clipboard. So it's created it, put it straight into the clipboard. I can paste this now. There we go. So there's the 100 character. The other thing that this one does, which I haven't seen any other counter string one do, is that this has a built in robot that can do the counter strings for me. So I'm going to move this over here. We've still got 100, so I'm going to click Mr. Robot. He says, in five seconds, four seconds. So I'm going to click on a field, two seconds, one seconds. The robot is going to just generate the counter string and type it in. That's quite useful when, because sometimes sites or programs differ when you copy and paste strings than when you type them in. So what this enables me to generate them, put the string in there, and type them in. What it basically means is for something like google.com, so something that's got autocomplete, if I do robot, stick it in there, then it will start typing and we should see the autocomplete stuff happen as it types. One second, there it goes. Oops, put a space. So let me put a space in there because we can change the delimiter. So I'm going to change the delimiter to be a space. Ask for 100 characters, robot, start. Four, three, two, one, go. And you could see that the autocomplete in Google was starting for a little while, then it stopped and gave up. So we can do a search for that. So the number is one to 100. There we go. 
So a robot is quite used for that. And the other thing we can do is, because it's counter strings, if I do create and I ask for the length of it, it'll tell me it's 100. But if I want to, I could paste in other text. Control C, clear it, Control V. How long is that? That is 330. Let's see if this text agrees with me. 330. 330. There we go. So there's counter strings. The important things are we've got a robot that will type things in for us and we can copy directly into the clipboard or we can create it, then copy it and we can calculate length and change the limit just like any normal counter strings. Strings lets us generate uh, strings. So I type in the start of the Unicode value in the end. And if I want a list of the Unicode values, I click this and it should open up the ascii.code.com site in a browser. And then we can see. So here we can see that here's a character set starting at 33, going through to 47. So that should take me up to there. Let me get this on one side. So we want 33 going up to 47. There we go. So there's 33 going through to 47. And again, I could generate that straight into the clipboard like that. It's already copied. Let's just double check. There we go. Or I can create it, copy it. It will copy anything that's in here, clear it. This is Java FX. I can generate Unicode values that probably cause this to crash. I'm not going to do that here, but just be careful when you type in Unicode values, but it lets you generate um, various strings which you can paste into applications and see if they handle it. That's pretty much what it's for. I can then type in these characters, which might be harder to generate, and see if my application handles it. Canned text tree is a still a work in progress. The aim is that we have a hierarchy filled with uh, text that we can double click on and copy and paste in. It's a bit like uh, uh, Goiko's bug magnet. I started creating this, then I saw Goiko had created bug magnet, so I didn't work on this. And at some point, what I'll probably do is I'll suck in Goiko's uh, bug magnet data into here so that I can do it. But can text tree is just a work in progress at the moment and prototype essentially. Launch URLs is more functionality. When you start and haven't created any launch URLs, you see all the promotion for my websites because that's important to me. But what I can do for the launch URLs is if I in here, just create a new folder called config. And then in the config folder, create a new folder called launcher. Then if I start creating text files in here, let me do that in Sublime. So I'm essentially creating property files. So I'm going to, let's create uh, one for this. So say we didn't have this, that's, <laughs> why didn't I? There we go. Let me copy that. So that's called ASCII code. I'll put an underscore equals that one. And let's put it in the string finder. Now what this is really supposed to be for is if you've got multiple environments, you could have different uh, set of URLs for each of the environments. And you just got them in a handy way. Essentially, it's just a, a crude bookmark tool. So if I save that, set in the right place, one launcher config. So I will call this uh, string tools, tools.text. Save that. Now if I close the tool down again, start up. Now you can see all this thread stuff. That's when the robot starts. That's just the logging messages that's going on. Now in the launch URLs now, there we go. So any text file, it will pick them up. So you can have a whole bunch text files here, test environment, production environment, performance environment, whatever else, URLs to the different places that you need or uh, social media tools or helpful test tools or bug trackers or whatever else, have the different profiles and different files, then you double click on it and it opens up in your browser. Now at the moment I have no way of configuring this, so that again, this is just, remember all of this was just designed for me, 
It was designed for my home use or my work use, for my personal use, and it does what I need. So there's no complicated GUIs around this. HTML comments is a crude way of uh, getting the HTML comments of a page. So if I go off to my main website and we can look for HTML comments on this page. So I get HTML comments in, paste the URL. So it's gone off, uh, got the page, scanned it for comments, and you can see that there is a comment in there called you found a secret paragraph, source viewer achievement awarded. Now I'm not sure anyone has uh, found that before. I have put that in as a an Easter egg years and years ago, but no one's ever mentioned that it exists. But now I've told you, so you, no prizes, no, no, no achievements, no rewards, now that I've shown you this stuff. So HTML Comment Finder is just for that. Now this tool is just a work in progress. Probably the most useful thing is the counter strings, but it's on GitHub, it will change. And feel free to look through the source code for this. It's written in Java. You might find some of it useful, don't know. But probably the most useful thing in this that it does that no other tool that I know of does is the robot one. So this is Dillinger, it's a markdown uh, tool. I, what I'm going to do, <laughs> I've never used it for this, let's try 10,000 with uh, spaces, so Dillinger should be okay, and I'm going to robot this. So it's basically just going to type 1 to 10,000 into Dillinger in markdown. But we've got this robot typing in. And this is one of the things that I don't think any other tools does, the typing of it. And the way this works, the reason this works, is the counter string algorithm that is coded, and you can have a look at it in the GitHub, is a forward counter string algorithm. So it doesn't know in advance the exact values that it's going to put in. It works them out on the fly, which means that eventually I'll be able to write a big text files with the counter strings in there. Really, I should give this the ability to um, have new lines. But most counter string algorithms start at the end of the string, build it backwards, then reverse the string and print it out. This one works from the start and just builds the string from start to finish. So doesn't necessarily take up quite as much memory. That's less important nowadays that uh, computers have so much memory. Um, but Again, it was an exercise for me. Can I write an algorithm that does counter strings without having to reverse the string? It was a coding exercise and it's made its way into this tool here. So there you go, that's robot in action. It'll probably it'll keep typing this in. Um, if we had a tool that automatically updated, then this would help test it. Have fun with the tool or try it. If you've got any comments, let me know. But I'm just showing you how this thing works now. And it's released to the public.